finally my MLP Iceberg video is up. It took an entire day to upload. Well, looks like I can relax for the rest of the week. Hey guys, it's me, Shunks, coming to you live from the bunker with another MLP Iceberg video. And guess what? We've got some shiny new icons, as well as a new microphone. As I mentioned in the last video, there are more things I wanted to cover about MLP that I just wasn't able to fit in or didn't even know about until I did some research. So let's get into it. Also, if you don't know how an iceberg video works, you might as well ask how breathing works, dude. Everybody gets it by now. Anyways, grab your limited edition silver rainbow dash apple juice and your rarity candy dispenser and get comfy as we dive deeper into the waters of the My Little Pony iceberg. Scootaloo the Chicken According to the Pony Image Board wiki, Scootaloo the Chicken is a common phrase from the episode Stairmaster, in which Scootaloo is called out for being afraid while looking for Fluttershy's escaped chicken. This X is a Y meme is used to describe chickens as Scootaloo, or Scootaloo is a chicken. Homophobic Rainbow Dash Though it was outright confirmed in the show, Bronies really didn't like the idea of Rainbow Dash being gay, at least in the early years of the fandom either because they were just homophobic or because they shipped their self-insert OCs with her. That era brought us some great unintentionally funny pictures. Like this one, this one, and this absolute masterpiece. Every time you call Rainbow Dash lesbian, it rains somewhere. Bronies the Musical Bronies the Musical is a musical about bronies, as in the fandom. The story follows three outsiders as they get absorbed into MLP. Songs from the show include The Sad Trombone, Wish Upon a Wish Book, and Janitor Blues. The whole thing is available for you to listen to on YouTube and Apple Music. Lost Flash Games In 2020, Adobe discontinued their Flash plugin, leaving at least hundreds of games and animations lost. This includes a plethora of MLP content, official and fan-made. One of the notable examples being Pony Maker, which is exactly what it sounds like, an in-depth custom character creator for Friendship is Magic. Brony References in Friendship is Magic As Friendship is Magic went on, more and more references to the fandom were snuck in by creators. This includes memes like 20% Cooler, and the show featuring popular background ponies in prominent roles. This came to a climax in the episode Slice of Life, which was essentially a big love letter to the Bronies. Heck, there are some references even I didn't get. That just shows how thorough they were. Spike at Your Service Original Draft The Season 3 episode, Spike at Your Service, features Spike becoming Applejack's servant after she saves his life. The original version of the episode had Rarity as the one that saves Spike's life. Her role in the story was replaced with Applejack after the writers thought that she came off as mean and unlikable towards Spike. The original script for the episode has never resurfaced, and there's a good chance it probably never will. 2009 Animation Test A year after the show bible was produced, a short two-minute test animation was made by Hasbro for Friendship is Magic. The test features Twilight, Pinkie Pie, and Rainbow Dash, and follows a similar story to the season one episode Feeling Pinky Keen. Throughout the entire thing, there's no music, only ambience. All three ponies are voiced by Tara Strong, unlike in the final show where they each have different voice actors. That can be chalked up to it only being a quick thing to show to investors, and never meant to be seen by the public. And for a while, it actually couldn't be seen by the public. The test surfaced in 2019, fairly recently, and just after Friendship is Magic ended. Billy and Mandy Predicted Bronies An episode of The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy features a parody of My Little Pony and Friends, called My Troubled Pony. The plot of the episode hinges on Grim being highly invested in the show, even though it's a cartoon about ponies made for little girls. The episode came out in 2005, five years before bronies would even become a thing. Did the writers of Billy and Mandy know something that the rest of us don't? Dark Skies Sam Hyde is an infamous alt-right comedian, most well known for his hoaxes and pranks. One of these was Dark Skies, a fake Kickstarter made to scam bronies out of their money. It was said to be a dating sim, featuring over 50 dateable ponies and over 100 hours of gameplay. Unsurprisingly, the project never reached its $7,500 goal, with Hyde taking the money and running away with it. If you want a more in-depth look at this, watch Izzy's video that she made about the incident. Animated James Animated James was an animator who was most well known for his MLP animations, like Sonic vs. Rainbow Dash, Beyond Her Garden, and Tropical Octave 3. His other works included his Sonic parodies, the Marvel musical, and an original series called Sea Students. 
His quote-unquote most recent contribution to the fandom was the Brony Polka, an 8-minute medley of MLP fan music in the style of Weird Al. What most people seem to remember is that he got bullied off the internet after somebody found his fart fetish blog on Tumblr. What isn't brought up as much is how he made fetish art featuring child characters and reportedly dated an underage girl at one point. My original plan was to end the segment with a farewell to James, wherever he is now, but I think I'll just end it by saying I really looked up to him back in the day, and wanted to make animations for YouTube like his when I got older. Now... Man, I don't know. Main 6 Mental Disorders A post on MLPForums.com goes into detail about the Main 6 and how they all could possibly be suffering from some sort of mental disorder. Twilight shows symptoms of APD, an avoidant personality. Fluttershy has social anxiety, Pinkie Pie and Rarity both have HPD, Rainbow Dash has hypomania, and Applejack has self-defeating personality disorder. I don't think these are true, but OP does make some pretty good points. People have also liked to headcanon characters as being neurodivergent, which I think is actually pretty cool. Examples include Pinkie Pie having ADHD, and Maude having Asperger's Syndrome. Slendermane The Slenderman is a famous character created by Eric Knudsen in 2009 for a Photoshop contest on the Something Awful forums. The character is known for his pale, featureless face and his slender build, hence the name. A pony version of this character, aptly named Slendermane, appeared in the episode Pinky Apple Pie for a few seconds. He can be seen hiding in the background, similar to the way Slenderman is often depicted. Little Miss Rarity Little Miss Rarity is a creepypasta in a similar vein to Cupcakes and Rainbow Factory. A description from the creator's old Tumblr blog says that, quote, it's the story of Rarity after a dark stormy night when Opal scratched her, pissed her off, and was accidentally killed by her. What followed was a gradual descent into madness and nightmares where Rarity's life and sanity fell irreversibly apart. CERN Ritual Hoax Predictive Programming The CERN Ritual was a hoax held at the European Organization for Nuclear Research in 2013, made to look like a human sacrifice was taking place in front of a statue of the Hindu goddess Shiva. The video gave rise to several tinfoil hat conspiracy theories about CERN working for the Illuminati, and using their large hadron collider to open a portal to hell and summon the Antichrist. A YouTube video points out the similarities between this conspiracy theory and the first movie in the Equestria Girls series. The movie follows Twilight as she steps through a portal. The other side of the portal is portrayed as a statue in the middle of the courtyard, like the one used for the ritual. Sunset Shimmer is also said to be an allegory for the Antichrist going through the portal to our world and taking on a demonic form. The Timeline Theory Well, here we are. I promised this in the last video, so here's the basic gist. This theory speculates that every piece of My Little Pony media takes place in the same continuity, with an interconnected branching timeline. Think the Zelda timeline, but for MLP. It goes as follows. G1 we open on Ponyland, a fantasy realm loosely connected to ours through interdimensional rainbow portals, like the Bifrost from Norse mythology. In Ponyland, the ponies learn to band together against whatever threat to their existence they face. These include T-Rex, Grogar, and the Smooze, among others. G4 With the ponies' foes out of the way, their society is allowed to progress into a form of medieval feudalism. The unicorn's magic gives them the ability to close the rainbow portals and block out the outside world guaranteeing them more safety from otherworldly evils. This gives us an explanation as to why we never see humans in some other generations. Tensions grow between the three pony tribes, but thanks to the fire of friendship, they end their fighting and found a new land called Equestria, far away from their old home. Equestria is relatively peaceful for the next 20,000 years under the rule of multiple princesses, including Celestia, Luna, and Twilight Sparkle. This is the part where the timeline begins to branch off. Timeline Split 1 in the Season 3 finale of Friendship is Magic, Twilight gets wings and becomes the Princess of Friendship. In the Good Timeline, Friendship is Magic continues into Season 4 and onwards, ending the Good Timeline. But in the Bad Timeline, Pony Life. No, no I'm not kidding, this is actually part of the theory. Pony Life represents the start of the Bad Timeline. Since the heroes of Equestria are goofing off, drinking potions that do god knows what in their mind, the land would obviously fall into ruin. Or at least the three tribes would separate. Which brings us to... My Little Pony Tales. In this series, the Earth Ponies can be seen living on their own. Only once do we see any other types of ponies, meaning that Unicorns, Pegasi, and Alicorns are somewhat hidden away from the Earth Ponies, possibly because they moved back to Ponyland. G3 Generations 3 and 3.5 give us a happy ending. Throughout the series of early G3 specials, we see Earth Ponies, Pegasi, and Unicorns all coming together, ending that branch of the timeline. Generation 5 This is probably going to age the video by a lot, but... 
Generation 5 is the next generation of MLP, set to premiere with a theatrical CGI film in September 2021. The only thing that's been confirmed recently is that there'd be a new cast of ponies instead of the main six. Everything else we know about G5 came from a leak a few years back. The leak contained emails from inside Hasbro describing what G5 would be exactly. The most famous of these emails discusses adding more boy characters to the main cast and having the show take place across different dimensions, like Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Well, whatever happens, I'll be down for it. On February 25th, Hasbro's gonna be holding an investors meeting. Hopefully then we'll get some definitive info about G5, what the art style will look like, who our main characters will be, etc. Until then, the best we can do is bide our time and lie in wait. Sonic Underground. Well, the world may be burning, but thanks for sticking with me through the whole video. I know it wasn't as long as the first one, but there just wasn't enough to cover this time around. Aside from the CERN thing, that was kind of a, kind of a lucky find. The next video I'll be making will either be about the Japanese version of MLP, or Lost NES games. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe, and you know what? Tell me in the comments what you'd like to see in Q5. I gotta get that viewer engagement somehow.